Hello, my name is Lindsay Purcell and I'm a first year medical student at the Oklahoma State University College of Osteopathic Medicine at Cherokee Nation. Hi, my name is Joseph Schnitker and I am also a first year medical student at Cherokee Nation. And today we're going to present to you our poster over the sex and geographic disparities among NIH NSDA study section committee members. So to start, let's look at our poster. Okay, starting off um, to give you a quick introduction as to what we're studying. Um, sex and geographic bias have been a longstanding issue with um, disproportionately um, a disproportionate dispersion of taxpayer funding for uh, scientific research, specifically distributed by the National Institute of Health. That being said, it's crucial with a dr drastically changing population um, that we have committee members among these um, national institutions that disperse taxpayer dollars to be representative of the populations um, within our country. So in our study, we were specifically looking at a particular study section of the NIH, um, which is the NSDA section, which stands for Neurological Sciences and Disorder Study A, to look at the composition of the committee. We specifically looked at the sex and geographic representation among these committees to see what was being represented. So our team used rosters for all meetings of the NSDA study section panels from the NIH, from the NIH in 2011, 2016, and 2021. From the rosters, we extracted uh, the member's name, their membership type, institution, state, sex, and academic rank. The study authors used a pilot-tested Google form for data collection. Uh, sex was determined through either a web-based search or genderize.io, where a value of 0 0.6 was required to assign sex. Data was analyzed to detect percentages of males and females among the study section members and their respective regions, and the regions uh, are defined by the U.S. Census Bureau for each year. So in the results sections, we see uh, that our geographical distribution is represented by the heat map at the top, and they're rather varied. In 2011, we saw that the West and the Northeast both were represented most at 28%, followed by the West at 24% and the South at 20. 2016 showed differences with the Midwest most represented at 28%, followed by the South at 26%, the Northeast at 25%, and the West at 19. And then one thing to note in 2016 was that one committee member was also from Canada and accounted for 2%. Lastly, in 2021, the distribution shifts again with the highest representation from the West at 31%, the Midwest at 26%, the South at 24%, and the Northeast at 19%. Uh, following that, sex differences are represented by the pie charts. And in the years studied, we saw that males outnumbered females two to one or greater, uh, but with no detectable trend over time. From the charts, uh, we can see in 2011, the NSDA study section was 67% male and 33% female. In 2016, the study section was 75% male and 25% female. And then in 2021, the study section was 30% female, 70% male. So as detected by our data, we did not see any um, noticeable trends in distribution of regional uh, disbursement um, or regional representation. Um, it was variable from year to year and there was no detectable trend as to, to what region was better represented over others. However, the sex differences were noticeable with the majority of the committees largely being represented by male um, participants and the minority being female participants. Um, as represented by our pie charts um, listed in our data section. That being said, that is definitely an area for improvement for this particular 
section of the NIH for them to look into further um, diversifying their committees based off of their sex differences. For an area, there have been several studies um, specifically addressing the sex bias among NIH distribution for um, funding for research. There are definitely areas where we can further research and further look into um, different parts of representation among these committees. One specific area I think that needs addressing are um, representation of racial and minority groups among these committees. That's not something that we have studied, nor is it something I've seen many studies on um, pertaining to the specific committees among the NIH. And that is something um, that can further be researched as we progress forward um, and ensuring that these committees can be representative of um, a more holistic picture of the United States and the populations that we represent. So that's all we have to present today and we appreciate your time. Thank you.